Here we have a large number of systems with impulse responses and corresponding transfer functions. And we, we're asked to find h of s from h of t. So to do that would require carrying out a Laplace transform or using a table of Laplace transforms. In some cases, we're given the transfer function and we need to find the impulse response. So that would require the opposite. That would require the inverse Laplace transform. That would go take us from the S domain to the time domain. So we're going to go through these one by one and look at how we can use the table to do this. So the first example we have a step function. So it's a, a unit step of amplitude 5. Another way of writing this is simply as 5. Because we're talking about the impulse response of causal systems. And when we're talking about Laplace transforms, we're always talking about positive time. So 5 and 5 u of t are exactly the same thing when we're talking about the impulse response of a causal system. So for a question like this where a Laplace transform is involved, the five or the unit steps don't matter. We don't need to think about the unit step. So the question is, what is the Laplace transform of five? So the closest thing we have in the table to five is this. I mean, in many tables, this would just be written as one. So the Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s. So because it's a linear process and it's a linear system, we can write the transfer function simply as 5 times 1 over s, or just 5 over s. The next one is t squared. And if we look in the table, there isn't anything that says t squared. The closest we can get is t to the power n, where n would be 2. And the inverse Laplace transform is n factorial. So that's 2 factorial divided by s to the power 2 plus 1. OK, and 2 factorial is just 2 times 1. So we can just write that as 2 divided by s to the power 3. So that's our transfer function. In other words, that's your output divided by your input. OK, the next question, we have a decaying exponential. So our signal will look something like that. So what's the Laplace transform of a decaying exponential. So in the table, we've got our decaying exponential right there. And in this case, a would be equal to 2. And we simply write 1 over s plus a. But because we have this factor 5, we need to multiply by 5. So it would be 5 times 1 over s plus a, which in this case is 2. The next example, we have the sum of two functions or two signals. We have t and e to the power 2t. Now, the Laplace transform is a linear process, so we can simply find the Laplace transform of each of these and then add them together. So the Laplace transform of t is 1 over s squared. So that's 1 over s squared. And then the Laplace transform of e to the 2t, we just did that a second ago. But this case, in this time, a will be minus 2. Because notice that here it's e to the power 2t. And in the table, it's e to the power minus a t. So a would have to be minus 2 for the 2 to match. So what we'll have is 1 over s plus a, where, s, where a is 
minus 2, so it would be 1 over s plus minus 2. Now, this next example, we're given the transfer function, and we need to go back and find the impulse response. So to do that, we'd look in the table for something that looks like 15 over 3s plus 6, there isn't. The closest there is is 1 over s plus a. So we'd have to try to rewrite this where we have s plus a number in the denominator. And we can do that like that. Now we can recognize that a is equal to 2, and the answer would be e to the minus at. The a is equal to 2, so it would be e to the minus 2t. Now, we still have this 15 to take into account, and we took a 3 common in the denominator. 15 divided by 3 is 5, and we can add a u of t. And even if we don't add a u of t, it's understood that it's a causal system. But for completeness, for, for it to be an accurate impulse response, you would need to ensure that there's a unit step. Okay. The next example, we have 1 over s to the power 4. And the closest thing we have, so what... What, where we're looking is actually here. We're looking in the right-hand column. We're looking in the column in the s domain. We're looking for something that looks like 1 over s plus. So 1 over s to the power of 4. The closest we have is this one here, which is n to the power, the n factorial over s to the power n plus 1. So in this case, n would be equal to 3. So... I can rewrite that as s to the power 3 plus 1, but that would require a 3 factorial in the numerator. So to compensate for that, we would need to add this factor here. And 3 factorial is simply 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. So we need to include a factor of 1 over 6, t to the power n, n is 3, so it's t to the power 3. And we add a unit step. Now, next example, we have a sine and a cosine added together. Again, linear process, so we can do them one by one and then add the results. So the Laplace transform of sine is b over s squared plus b squared. In this case, b would be 3. So it would be 3 over s squared plus 3 squared. And the Laplace transform of a cosine is s over s squared plus b squared. But this time, b would be 4. So it's s over s squared plus 4 squared. Again, because it's a linear process, we can just add the two Laplace transforms. OK. The next example, we're looking in the s domain, and we're looking for the corresponding time domain representation. But notice, well, let, let's look for something that looks like 1 over s plus something squared in the table. The closest I can find is this, where you have s plus a squared plus omega squared. So you could say that here your a is equal to 2 and your omega is equal to 3. But we're expecting an omega in the, in the numerator. Here we have a 1 in the numerator. So what we could do is simply say that there's a, 
a 3 up there, but we're multiplying by 1 over 3. Then all we need to do is to take this expression here. Let's replace a with 2 and omega with 3. So you have your factor of 1 over 3, e to the minus 2t, sine 3t, and we finish it with a unit step. Next example, we have a shifted impulse. So we know that the Laplace transform for an impulse is just one. But the time delay or the T shift property of the Laplace transform is that when a function is shifted in time by a seconds, in this case a equals 3, then the corresponding Laplace transform, which in our case is just um, 1, is multiplied by e to the power minus a s. So we simply multiply e to the power minus a s. a is 3, so 3 s multiplied by 1. That's the Laplace transform. Now, if you have a shifted step function, it's exactly the same. The Laplace transform for step function is 1 over s. So what we would be doing would be multiplying 1 over s by the same factor, e to the minus 3s, because a equals 3. So this is time shifting happening. So we're shifting in time, and the effect in the s domain is multiplying by this factor, e to the minus as. Next example, we have an exponential function. But the exponential function is shifted. So it's not written out clearly. Let me just make it clear. So e to the t minus 3, u of t minus 3. So don't look at the unit step. What we're looking at is the exponential function. The exponential function in the frequency domain is 1 over s plus a. a, in this case, will be the coefficient 1. So my a is 1. So it's 1 over s plus 1. Now, we have this delay of 3 seconds. That gives me my other a of 3. So I multiply by the same factor. So it's the same factor in these three questions. I'm multiplying by e to the minus 3s because we have this uh, delay by 3 seconds. And in our next question, We have 6 over s to the power 4 multiplied by this familiar delay um, factor. So we have this e to the minus a s factor. So we immediately identify that that is going to be a delay by 2. And this looks like it's 3 factorial over s to the power 3 plus 1. So that's going to give us our t cubed. So what we should be thinking of is t cubed. But because it's shifted by 2 seconds, it'll be t minus 2 cubed. We then we have to put in the unit step, and the sh unit step will also be shifted. So we can't just say u of t. It's a shifted unit step. And in our final example, we have two terms. And they both look like they're going to be exponentials. In, so we should be looking at this here, this top pair. 
So in this first one, a will be equal to 3, and the second one, a equals minus 2. So we also have this scaling factor there. So the answer would be 2 e to the minus 3t plus e to the 2t, and then all of that gets multiplied by a unit step. So we've seen how we can use the table of Laplace transforms to find the transfer function from an impulse response, or just how to convert from um, a function of time to a function of uh, frequency and back. So F of T and F of S, Laplace and inverse Laplace transforms respectively.